This morning, we put out probably our most contested video yet. And it's ironic that on the day that that video comes out, we have results for you too. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and today is a continuation of our comparison between wine yeast and champagne yeast is the easy way to say yes. it. Yes. But it's a whole bunch of numbers. Lalvin K1V1116 and Lalvin EC1118. Now, several people have voiced their opinions. Several people have told me how wrong I am to think that champagne yeast is bad. Now, here's the thing. I never said it's bad. Well, I did. Maybe I did. I probably did. It's just not meant for brewing and there's better options out there. I want to make a statement too, and it was pointed out, somebody said this, and it's true, and I just, I should have mentioned it last time. These are actually related yeast strains, okay? K1V1116 and EC118 are not that different. K1V is known for making more fruity esters. EC118 is known for making a lot of carbonation and being able to burn through just about any situation it's thrown in. Now, that's not necessarily bad, but, I just don't feel that for an average brew, it's the first thing you should go to. It's kind of a last resort, and that's okay too, because at least you didn't waste the brew, you still got it to finish. A little age, you probably won't tell the difference, okay? That's important to know. In the end, after a couple of years, they can probably taste pretty much the same. We're gonna find out. Today, they are 10 days old. We're not expecting great things in the flavor department, but, it's important to see at this stage, how different are they? They should be just about done fermenting. They were sitting with uh, neutral pressure for several days now. It's kind of crazy. They erupted really, really fast, brewed up fast. You'll notice this video is coming out before the D47 versus bread yeast. Want to know why? They're still chugging away. These two are done. So first thing we're going to do, get out the box of elevation, get out a sanitized pitcher, we're gonna take the K1V. I'm gonna put it up here for some elevation. Derica is holding a cat who just wanted to get involved in everything. I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna hand this off to my lovely assistant. Who... All right, Tigger, you gotta go. Yeah. I, I have to have sanitized hands. Go ahead. And everything's been sanitized, as always. Even me. And I'm going to stick that in about halfway down and just start the racking process. I'm going all the way to the bottom. Now, one thing right off the bat, I'm smelling this. It smells footy. It, I can smell, there's, there's some funk going on. This is the K1V. And I don't know if it's because it was a slightly higher gravity must, maybe it's stressed a little, I don't know. But keep in mind, this is the elderberry stuff that has diammonium phosphate in it, so it's got nutrients, it had everything that it should have needed to really work well. It even wasn't that higher of a gravity, so I'm a little dubious about that. I wonder if the champagne yeast does it too. Do you need to tip? I need to tip, otherwise we're gonna lose our siphon. And that's why there's two of us, because I'm a natural blonde and I miss stuff. Okay, so that one's done. She's gonna take this. The lease is kind of creamy looking. Um, not a tremendous amount. I didn't really expect it. It's an all juice fermentation, so they don't usually give off a lot of lease. What we probably really have is the yeast. So one of the reasons why I think it might have gone so much faster and started up so much faster is because I did use a whole packet of yeast, if you recall, in each half gallon. So that's easily 10 times as much yeast as I normally use. Makes sense. All right, so we have this one. Now I'm going to do a test on it and see what it did. These started at, should say on it. 1.110. Okay, so not a super high gravity for this kind of yeast to begin with. Notice I'm not degassing. There's a reason. It's because we're gonna be putting them right back in these bottles and I'm afraid there's gonna be less headspace. I don't really wanna have a problem with that. So because this was the original fermentation bottle, once we racked it, I took it to the sink I scrubbed it out really good so that way there was no more lease or sediment left in it and then I sanitized it so it's ready to be 
Um, I need that back. <laughs> you hit, you hit the bottom. <laughs> I remember, this is the K1V yeast. But because we didn't start with a super high gravity, this stuff could easily go dry and then some. So this may not taste real good to us because we don't generally like the sweet stuff. Or we generally like the sweet stuff. Now to get a reading, now that it's floating. No, it's not totally dry. 1.004. That is completely four points above dry. <laughs> it's actually more than that, but that's another video. There was some question as to how well we didn't cross-contaminate last time. We're showing you. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pour a little. Just enough to taste. I'm gonna very carefully pour this back in. Now, as he's already stated, we'll state it again just for clarification. We did not degas this because we, we want to retain as much of the gases in there so that blanket so that yeah that. I'm pouring very carefully so as to not agitate or oxygenate a little bit of carbonation in here I can see the bubbles coming out that's just co2 coming out so you're, in a way you're dripping juice uh, so in a way I am sort of degassing it just not the traditional method I'm also spilling this all over the place. There is actually a spout on this pitcher. Probably be a good idea to use it, right? Yeah. I didn't lose that much. And I'm closing it up. Ooh, it is, buddy. I can smell it now. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so that is the K1V. And now, wash, rinse, and repeat. Like we said, three weeks. Hopes are not high. Oh my God. Did we mark these wrong? That one smells better. <laughs> it actually really does. It's, it smells incredibly better. So that is proof right there that this is an actual test. We're not being judgmental, explicitive <laughs> word here that people assume us to be. We just had some strong opinions and we did tons of research and that research led us to believe a certain thing was hey, true. If EC1118 comes out great on this, don't get me wrong, I will be using it. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would love to see me eat my words. And you know what? I just might. You never know. This, just on smell alone, <laughs> EC1118 is winning. As we always do when we're racking. We elevate one that we're taking liquid out of, and we put the other one there. We do it with two people just because it's so much easier. And put it about halfway in. I need a little slack to get the siphon going, which is just a vacuum, really. And then, in this case, I'm going to drop it to the bottom. The lease wasn't much on the other one. I don't expect much here. We're not using solids. Yeah, I think it did the exact same thing as the other stuff. Now I have to say at this point, I'm not upset. I'm not mad. I'm shocked at the smell difference. This smells pleasant. That does not. That's shocking. Now I don't know what they taste like yet. They haven't been degassed. They haven't been aged. This is literally 10 days old. I may be disproving a long-standing myth about champagne yeast here too. And I'm okay with that. I like proving things wrong. It's kind of fun. Even if it's myself, I'm okay with that. All right, so now that we have it racked, get out our freshly sanitized baster, graduated cylinder, and hydrometer, and I'm going to take a reading on this one too. I'm trying in my head to come up with reasons why the smell might be so different, and I'm wondering if maybe the EC118 didn't ferment as far? That's about the only reason that I can see why they would be that different in smell. And let me just fill this all the way up because last time it went really dry. So I'm going to assume that this is dry as well. I could be wrong. Honestly, I kind of hope I'm wrong because if EC118 is great to use, 
That means that all those beginner's kits where they tell you to use it aren't wrong. Okay, where's the other glass? <laughs> I overfill. Can you hold the top of that for me for a second? Oops. Even the color's different. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bet you this one even drier. They matched, they're exactly the same. So they fermented in the same amount of time, the exact same amount of fermentation. That's impressive that they're that consistent. Like I said, they're not that dissimilar. They're not as different as say, you know, bread yeast versus uh, a wine yeast or something like that. They're in the same relative family, but K1V is supposed to be bred to be more of a dry wine yeast is what they call it. And it should be um, more fruity. I'm gonna pour sample off oh look at the color difference wow, wow that is shocking i hey you know what maybe i'm gonna be eating my words i'm okay with that because you know what it's just another thing that i get to say you know what you should be using this <laughs> and people get to hate me for telling them to use it so either way i'm wrong it doesn't matter but either way it's fun and that's okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab this jar and I'm going to pour this back in, again, slowly and carefully. By the way, you can tell, I'm not expecting that to taste very good. Look at how little of a taste we get. I'm expecting that to taste pretty good, so bigger taste. So, keeping to our system, just like that. And now... The moment of truth. Actually, can I do this? I, won't, I would like to smell one and the other yeah, right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, That's and then okay. I'll let you do that. That's right. Same I'm going to take this away because it's okay. kind of wet. So I'm doing a little bit of a... Actually, first, let's just look at that. The K1V is very cloudy. And as I recall, when I made Viking's Blood, Viking's Blood had a similar quality to it. It still kind of does to this day. It hasn't completely cleared out. Whereas the EC one, wow, that's actually incredibly clear for 10 days. So I'm gonna give it a little swirl and a nose. Let's just say it's not pleasant. It's very, I hate to use the word footy, but it, it's footy. I mean, that's like gym socks right there. <laughs> pleasant, it's nice, it's berry. I, I get, I mean, I have to imagine a foot smell. Let's just put it that way. Hey, you, you take a smell. <clears throat> I know this is the part that everybody's really interested in. Derek actually has a better smell, sense of smell than I do. I do um, smell the gases yeah. that it's still releasing. Because remember, we didn't guess. If we degassed, de it might smell different. Um, but, but beyond oof. that, I do smell. There's some berry. Some berry, but it's, it's like a tart berry. Mm-hmm. This, I get more of a sweet, almost floral yeah, scent. This is crazy. And definite berry, like juicy berry, like my mouth starts watering. If I didn't know better, I would think we got them backwards. Seriously. So on, on color and scent alone, I'm going to say that... Yeah, I'm EC118, far superior. I mean, it's not even just a little bit, it's far superior. Um, if I had to put scores on these, this is like a one to two to me. It's so rough right now. This on smell alone is like a six, maybe even a seven. It's that good. It actually smells good. I have to try it. <laughs> I just have a feeling it's gonna be awful. And I was right. It's it's relatively unpleasant. And then I'll give a comparison. Okay. Whoa. First of all. Go ahead, while I collect my thoughts and get my bearings back. Yeah. Oh, 
harsh. It's really harsh and really tart and bitter at the beginning. These are very dry. And then it goes, oh, look, there's the sweetness. Oh, yeah. And then it and goes then back gone again. to bitter tartness. And it's just like, I, what are you doing to me? I had the exact same experience. What I will say is neither of these have any mouthfeel, any tannin quality whatsoever. And that one does the exact opposite. This one, <laughs> I get, I don't get the tartness and the bitterness, but I get the dryness, mm -hmm. like the dryness of a, of a, of a, a wine, for lack of a better word. Um, if I have to give a score, I'll start out with a score. This is like a one. This is now like a four. Okay. And here's why. This one, when I first tasted it, I got rough not so much an alcohol rough just it didn't taste finished it tastes very green very young lots of chemically flavor chemically type flavors and then it got sweet and then pff, it was gone this one when it first went in it was nice and sweet and berry and fruity and i'm like oh wow this is it there it is and then it went tart bitter yeah right at the end so they did the exact opposite of each other neither of them is good I, I was, will say that. I wasn't getting a strong sweetness on either of them. Oh, this I got one, sweet right away. This one was dry and then tart berry. Right, where me, it smelled more it. like sweet berry, I got tart berry on the flavor. I'm sure you don't mind if I finish this, do you? No. Um, but it's definitely berry. Uh, if you guys are paying attention, the off-gassing is working. We're already getting bubbles on our... Um, he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a zero. So we're we're good. We have a good um, blanket on there, so we don't need to worry about uh, anything bad happening to the brews. My eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we have made some rough things before. That's one of the roughest brews we've made. Now, again, these are only ten days old. Even still, they should all taste that bad. Um, so that is an expected result. This is not an expected result. There is, okay, the EC1181, at this point, I will give it a five. Right, that is my highest score I can give. It is a five. I can drink that as it is. With like a red meat or something, it might actually be sort of pleasant. Yeah. As it stands right now, it has this lovely dry red wine quality going in, then it goes really bitter and it's just, it's an unpleasant bitter. I think that'll age out though. Yeah. I also think the K1V version will actually get a lot better in age too. It, yeah. does, it looks unfinished. Like you can see there's like a creamy, almost silt forming in the glass yeah. as I swirl it. This, this one is definitely looking more like a finished product. It's clear, it's gem-like, it's pretty to look at. To say that I'm shocked by this result is an understatement. I, off camera, we were just talking and I was like, I seriously am starting to think we mixed the bottles. Like, but I know we didn't. I mean, we've watched the footage over to make sure that we didn't do that and. We were very careful, your side, my side. So it, it's all good. Um, this is definitely an only time will tell yeah. kind of scenario. But at this point, at only 10 days, Ding, 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 ding. We have Champagne a winner. Champagne East made a drinkable product. I wouldn't call it good yet, but it's on its way to being good. Like you can tell, I think, from, from my experience, in two months, the EC118 is still going to be better because it's already better now. It's not going to go backwards. But as I said, only time will tell. And when that time's up, we'll share our results with you again. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.